Live from the Fairmont Hotel in San Jose, California, it's The Cube at Big Data SV 2015. Hey, welcome back everyone. We are live here in Silicon Valley in San Jose for Big Data SV. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon Angle. I'm with my co-host Jeff Kelly, Big Data Analyst, and Lawrence Schwartz, VP of Marketing at Opportunity. Welcome back again. Thanks for uh, coming back. Thanks for having me, always a pleasure. It's Last a good sign when people keep coming back. Yeah, we saw you in <laughs> Vegas, with the, your, your customer event was great to see you, you guys had a great dinner. Thanks for hosting us at the last event we were at. Great to see the success. So, got to get your take. We've been pounding the pavement all day here on theCUBE and talking yeah. to folks. The big announcement, obviously, the data platform, all the analytics stories are out there. This year, what's the bottom line this year, Lawrence? Tell us what's happening, what's your perspective? A lot of action, a sure. lot of formations, a lot of, speculation about the growth, the new right, waves right. coming in, what's, what's the take? Well, I think from, uh, from a technology perspective, the interesting take that I see and we see with our customers is, especially from last year, is there's a movement of how do I do more with Hadoop in terms of getting this into, say, real time, right? That's a big movement. People are trying to figure out how they push the boundaries. You see some of the announcements from some of the vendors like MapR talking about this as well. You see the growing popularity of Spark. So that's coming up, and, and we're surprised. We see it uh, in our customers as well. They kind of start with uh, some basic loading and, and getting started there for cost savings. We were talking about this earlier. Uh, but they've really moved on to more applications that look at how to keep up the data lake in real time, keep it fresh, uh, how to pull in sorts of different data feeds and get uh, a real-time view of their customers and their business. Um, so that's a new angle, um, and that pushes us into new uh, boundaries and some new exciting possibilities. Mm. Well, I think you're absolutely right. We're definitely starting to see the, the conversation shift from, oh, I'm going to move a little bit of data out of my data warehouse, I'm going to save some money and put it in Hadoop, to what am I going to do with all this data? Mm -hmm. And when you talk about what you're going to do with all that data, it's analytics, and analytics increasingly has to be, if not real time, close to real time, or you know, it depends on the use case, but right. you know, the, the idea of this long lag time between when you have a question and getting an answer to it just doesn't work in this, in this world. That's right. And yeah, we've seen uh, some interesting use cases with uh, our implementation. Now, we launched our Hadoop offering at the last strata, mm -hmm. so, uh, and already we've seen some interesting uh, adoption and, and people taking it up. And you see it for a couple of different things. One is people are really looking for uh, a way to kind of do pre-processing and then kind of keep that golden copy in, in a data warehouse. So we work with one major healthcare provider, and they do just that. They pull it in, they do all the, you know, they use the Tunity, which is you know, using data replication for getting it into Hadoop, doing a lot of processing there, and then putting that kind of that golden copy for mm -hmm. you know, higher speed analytics into a traditional data warehouse. Um, and then we see this real-time data feeds that we were talking about earlier. So we have another customer, a, a cable provider, one of the major players, and what they're doing is they've got 200 different uh, data sources that they're pulling in, uh, information from all across their enterprise, and they want to get a much more real-time view, of, particularly on the financial transactions, what's happening and whatnot. So they would, in the past, have pulled that into a, what's called a traditional data warehouse. Uh, now they've wanted a way, and they've pulled an opportunity to do that, to get it into uh, a platform where they could leverage Hadoop. They're actually using the, the Pivotal version uh, uh, mm -hmm. with that. Um, and that's a way to kind of get that more real-time feed that you could do in the past with a data warehouse, and now you can do much more flexibly, easily uh, with, with Hadoop. So we're seeing more of those trends. Uh, and then we're seeing modernization is kind of showing up as well. So um, surprising to see, but uh, we've got uh, customers who are going from uh, mainframe to, to map R. I'm looking to do that, mm -hmm. right? which is, um, it's a cost savings play, it's, uh, it's a question of how do I uh, get what I've worked with before into a new way to look at the data. So those are the things that, that we're seeing a lot of. Mm -hmm. So you, you mentioned Pivotal, so got to get your take on, on some of the big announcements around here at the Open Data Platform. Talk a little bit more about, about maybe that specifically your take, but also just generally, how do you see this market evolving now? I mean, is it, we, we're starting to see, in, in my opinion, some clear factions or alliances start to start to right. be, uh, form, mm -hmm. um, which to me says actually the market's maturing. Mm -hmm. um, talk about your viewpoint. How do you view kind of the, some of the announcements we heard over the last couple of days and but more generally kind of 
where this market's going in terms of consolidation, potentially a lot of acquisitions that are probably going to happen over the next right. 12 to 18 months. Sure. Now, Attunity has always been a player where we've tried to be, uh, you know, kind of the neutral Switzerland, if you will, in the mm -hmm. data space, and that's been true with the uh, data databases out there, the data warehouses all before Hadoop, everything from Oracle to SQL Server to um, to, to Teradata to Vertica. We, we work with all those uh, uh, players, and we have some type of relationship. Uh, oftentimes, very good partnerships. Um, so, as a company from our angle, we've tried to maintain that for uh, for the Hadoop uh, uh, vendors as well. So when we first uh, uh, launched, we came out with uh, support for Cloud Aaron Hortonworks. Actually, what we announced for this show is our official uh, support for MapR as well as for Hawk. Mm -hmm. um, so we are trying to uh, enable that to you know, people to work with whatever distribution makes sense for them mm -hmm. and what they're doing. Uh, now going open, uh, that's always a, an interesting you know, kind of change and shift. Um, and what I've seen from other places, and I've come from prior to this uh, in the MySQL space, and there are a lot of vendors around that, and some mm -hmm. of them were closed, and some of them were more open, and there was kind of a hybrid mix there. Um, and in general, going and, and having a much more open platform tended to be good for adoption, right? It tended to get more people using it. It tended to get a higher comfort level with, uh, with companies on whether they could adopt something, what they could do for it. Even if in reality sometimes it's still pretty much a lock-in if you really use one, one type of technology, if it's open, but still there's that perception of it. Um, so I just think it's a, a general uh, good direction. I think it'll help drive adoption, so we're, uh, we're excited to see that from our we, vantage point. We had a comment on the queue earlier from a guest that said, ML is the new C SQL, machine learning is the new yeah. structured query language. What's your take on that? Because that points to a direction of, okay, analytics and, and platforms yeah. have to have tooling and platforms kind of working together. You know, pure play tools are kind of being viewed as lower tier mm -hmm. when platforms are, are seeing too much of a land grab. So this new balance is platform with integrated application tooling seems to be a sweet spot. So machine learning kind yeah. of highlights it. What's your take on all that? Obviously that's a key area. Uh, for figuring out all the analytics piece and working with the different distributions and so on. Yeah, no, it's it's uh, it, it is a critical uh, step that you know uh, that you have to figure out in that that whole uh, value system. And what we've saw, um, you know, Attunity would would take data from the source and kind of move it to a target like a data warehouse. Um, and then you know that's kind of where we left it. And then there was a gap right between taking transactional data. Um, and then getting it into a, a data mart or a third normal form or something that you could do analytics on, right? And uh, that actually spurred you know, one of the acquisitions we did at the end of last year, a company called BI Ready, to do just that, you know, take that transactional, do some of the integrity checks, do some of the, the third normal form transformations, the data mark cleanup, and get it to that final step, right? So that, that is an important part of the value chain. We recognize that that's why we moved in that direction. Um, I think that becomes important for not just uh, data warehouses, but for Hadoop uh, as well. Mm -hmm. um, so absolutely. Um, and then, you know, when I when I look at all the stuff coming in on the machine side, right, and the other angle of, uh, that that we're seeing more of, and uh, I think will be is how do you um, take some of that completely unstructured, varied format data, merge that in with Hadoop, right? Um, and uh, I think that's going to be a combination of Hadoop. I think that's going to be a combination of NoSQL. I think you'll see mm -hmm. some of that, more of that happening as well, so. Where are the customers seeing the most traction and where's the most confusion do you see? I see all these events are always about the momentum points. Where are people on the edge of the bleeding edge and the reality, where's the mainstream? Certainly yeah. when you see big movements like open data platform, mm -hmm. IBM, a lot of the big companies are here, you know there's money on the table. So right, the question right. is where are we on the timetable of stream yeah. to the bleeding edge and, and early adopters. How can you, where in the spectrum are we? Yeah, yeah, I think if you look at that whole classic, you know, more chasm, right, and where <laughs> are we? I think, it's, I think it's on the early adopter side, right, which um, when I was talking to somebody else about that, they said, oh, so that means it's really early, but if you look at Moore's curve, it's not really early, that's, that's about halfway there, right? Then you get the late adopters and then the, 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 the flow after that. So uh, it's hit that point, um, but it's amazing. It's still, um, there's still a big learning gap, right? There's still, um, uh, even in the people that are very smart and savvy, and you know, the, the people who might come to the show, they go back to their companies, and they're still you know, very well versed in traditional SQL languages and Oracle and all the you know, SQL server, and uh, you know, it's like a whole new language you have to learn just to begin with to, to kind of figure out Hadoop. Um, and so that, that knowledge is, is, is a challenge, but you know, how do you close that gap? You close it by making it much more, much easier to do, right? 
Um, I think it's interesting the way that, uh, you know, go back to NoSQL for a second, right, that Hadoop, that Hadoop evolved versus you know, like Mongo, right? Mongo kind of went for the very simple, dead easy to use uh, solution, right, right from the start, made them very popular. Uh, Hadoop very po uh, popular for the processing power, right, and flexibility, but always kind of lagging from, at least in the beginning, on that, you know, on the gap of using it, right? It took a real PhD initially to kind of get it going. It's still pretty complex. And it's still pretty complex, yeah. but, but the tools are getting there, yeah. right? It's the tools that, that we work on, the data integration side, it's uh, mm -hmm. the people who work on, you know, all the different formats to adopt SQL to it. Um, it's getting, you know, the operating system in there. It's packaging those up. And, you know, at some point, um, it just, it's going to get buried underneath everything, but, you know, we're not there yet. Yeah. So. I mean, but I think, you know, those, you, you touched on a really important point. Some of the, mm -hmm. some of the challenges of, of getting Hadoop to go mainstream, and some would say, well, it's already mainstream. Mm -hmm. I would argue that big data as a concept is mainstream. I think most enterprises sure. understand the potential. But in terms of Hadoop as a technology, I think, you know, we're still seeing in terms of adoption, you know, you see the Global 1000, mm -hmm. you're definitely involved uh, with Hadoop projects, some successful, some not. Yeah. You've got your data-driven or data-born startups that, you know, it's built in their DNA. Mm -hmm. But I think there's this huge middle part of the market, the meaty part of the market that's still on the sidelines I'm yeah. not quite sure. And one thing that's going to have to happen, whether it's tools like Continuity and others that take away some of this complexity, make it right. easier to, to consume. Mm -hmm. And then you've also, the other equation is, you know, the security, the compliance, that kind of angle, which is also a data integration play. I mean, that's part of it, understanding right. the lineage of data. So that has to happen. And then ultimately it's about doing something with all this data. And that's, you know, sure. the area where I think, you know, there's, there's definitely some, some confusion, uh, you know, in that meaty part of the market. Mm -hmm. you know, we're seeing with, with some of the data warehouse vendors are seeing, you know, basically flat, flat revenue, and I think it's because, you know, to some extent, some money's going to the Hadoop space, right? In uh, that's not going to go to the data warehouse space, but a lot of mm -hmm. it is just confusion. I think people sure. are not quite sure what steps to take. Um, so, I mean, so, what's your take on that? Do you think uh, what are some of the things that need to happen to really accelerate the market uh, to move this beyond again those global 1,000 to right. you know the global 10,000? Sure, sure. Well, I think uh, one interesting uh, aspect that, that we've seen uh, in, in other areas on the data warehouse side, we've seen uh, very successful adoption of people using data warehouses, things like Redshift and Amazon, that they might not have used before, or might not have considered they might have just try to do this themselves or kind of do on Oracle. Um, and because, you know, Amazon really lowered the bar, made it very easy to kind of try, get started, and get mm -hmm. moving, right? So that's one way to, to um, that I think if you have further movement there, and uh, some of the vendors have done that, right, uh, some of the providers like Amazon and Microsoft and others have really made it easier to kind of try out Hadoop on, on that platform. And it's not so much whether it's on the cloud or on-premise where it is, it's just it becomes much easier to go and start and try and experiment and play, right? So those types of, uh, of sandboxes, right, uh, that's, that's kind of one uh, key uh, piece of it, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, and then, um, you know, uh, I've seen that, uh, you know, some of the announcements and a lot of announcements this week, but you can even see some <laughs> of the vendors uh, on the cloud side, you know, talking about the tools that they're integrating for doing analytics and making that easier to do, right, uh, as part of their platforms. You know, so that lowers the bar. So now it's easier to kind of get it on there and try, and then it's easier to just try and experiment with the analytics, right? Mm -hmm. So it's all pieces of the stack. It's kind of getting it up and running. It's, it's integrating that and making that low and easy to try with the cloud vendors and then of course you know the data integration side how do you kind of get it there over and easy because when you look at um, like on the data integration side what people try and often start with is hey there's a great tool scoop out there right part of the uh, Apache framework um, but uh, again very hard to use and get mm -hmm. started with and so those are all those pieces kind of have to come together mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So talk a little bit more about Attunity. What kind of momentum are you seeing? Um, you know, as, as a you know public company, we can we can see your numbers. But talk, take us inside that a little bit more. What kind of uh, momentum you're seeing with customers? Any yeah. trends in terms of you know maybe new types of customers you're you're attracting? What's what's kind of new in in, in Attunity's world? Sure, sure. Yeah, uh, it's been uh, interesting for us in a couple of different areas. Um, so uh, one area is uh, you know the capability of how do I uh, take advantage of Hadoop. Um, or how do I take advantage of alternative data warehouses in places that people might not have considered or, or kind of looked with or looked at? So, um, you know, you go outside and a lot of people talk about the data here, but there's also mm -hmm. the application layer on that. So we have products in the Gold Client, or I'm sorry, in the SAP space, a product called Gold Client, which is, hey, a lot of companies, you know, most organizations, many organizations are running SAP, right? 
So how do you um, how do you tier that, right? That's one question that we see, which is on one end there's HANA, right? Mm -hmm. On the other end there's and the next level is SAP. But then what do I do with some of that other data? I might want to archive and get out, run on SQL Server, run on uh, you know an HP platform, run on Hadoop. So we're kind of seeing some interest on people who have these you know traditional very capable systems, but looking to kind of tier that going all the way out to Hadoop. So that's kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. Um, another uh, area that um, you know we've seen kind of uh, uh, some changes in is if you look at uh, and again, this goes a little bit back to the real time, but how do you blend more seamlessly the real time experience or the real time with analytics, right? So I've got massive amounts of data that I'm storing. I've got this massive amounts of OLAP or you know uh, data, and I've got these uh, this transactional data, right? Or, you know, OLTP data. And so, how do I uh, how do I blend that more seamlessly? Um, it'd be nice to have the uh, you know the the one box that did it all, right? <laughs> but people are looking for creative ways to pull mm -hmm. that together. So, um, so that's an area that we try to, to help uh, people with. Um, and then you know another area is uh, uh, which is kind of again surprising where your customers lead you sometimes. Um, but people are looking at how do I make uh, for you know not just to do, but how do I I keep up a real-time copy, disaster recovery, and other things for just a typical mm -hmm. data warehouse. And that turned out, it was an interesting challenge for us to look at, because that's a hard problem, right? Um, when you are a company that pulls data out of a database, right, and you can just look at the log files, you can look for the changes, map those over, and then bring them over. And then we had customers saying, well, that's great, could you do that for Teradata for us, right? And like, well, they don't have a log file that we can just go <laughs> pull this from. Uh, so we've developed some new technologies that, that we announced as well, uh, change data capture for a, a platform like Teradata or Data Warehouse, mm -hmm. where you have to now go and query the database and look at the changes and then pull those out and then bring those over and make that part of a continual process. Um, and that's good, again, for disaster recovery for uh, if they want to keep a, a copy of this, you know, archived in Hadoop. Um, so again, more of doing, doing more real-time aspects, doing more near-time aspects uh, with the data stores that they have on one end, and at the other end, you know, how do I pull stuff out, like the SAP example, uh, for more archival or other, yeah. other reasons, so. So two, two questions I'd like to ask you real quick, yeah. is the metadata is obviously very really important, and we were talking earlier about, and you know, will there ever be an open data platform-like concept for metadata? And it's very difficult, I mean, obviously, to do that. And two, where's the bottlenecks in the big data world? If you had to point to a couple key areas that you see consistently in customers, uh, where are the bottlenecks? So one, metadata, yeah. will there ever be uh, some sort of consortium around metadata, or is that right, right. something even doable? Mm -hmm. And two, where are the big bottlenecks? Where are the three big, top three pressure points you see in bottlenecks? Yeah, yeah, I think the, uh, uh, the metadata is an interesting one, right, because it's so varied and it's so uh, context dependent. Um, so, uh, so and that's so critical. No one's just going to like just change anything, right? Right, right, right. <laughs> so it's 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 a critical problem to uh, to figure out. But uh, you're, you're right; it's hard to kind of get a standard around it and people to, to work around it. Um, you know that that might be easier to do within different verticals, right? Different industries that have more common data for formats, uh, common out of the sharing. You can maybe see more of that in healthcare, things like that. Maybe starting uh, in that direction. Uh, but it is an area that could use further work. Uh, and then the bottlenecks, um, you know, it's interesting, you know, being a technology company, I first thought it would be, well, what's the technology bottleneck? First one's always the people, right? Um, it's the training, it's the awareness, it's the, uh, the skill sets. Um, you know, even, uh, even when we, uh, you know, bring on people to our own company and, and, and they've worked a lot mm -hmm. for many years and did data warehouse space or database space, it's still kind of a, a big effort and training and, and experience they have to kind of put on top of that. Um, you know the uh, the other uh, bottleneck, boy. Uh, it's it's oftentimes um, you know uh, people see the value of a of a project in say Hadoop, right? Um, and uh, and, or, and they want to get started, but then the bottleneck arises. They don't plan for is they kind of see the cost savings, right? They see what they want to do, but then there's that uh, three month time period, right? Where it's time to get get it up and get it going and get it started, right? And so that tends to be a, a bottleneck. You know, it's more of a time delay, if you will, in, in the process. Mm -hmm. So that's that's one that comes up. Um, so those are the ones that I kind of see. You know, it's the people, it's the it's the planning process, um, and um, yeah, I think, I think those are the ones that are most prevalent from my viewpoint. The um, overall landscape of open source obviously is important, but the reality is, is that there's a lot of jockeying for position. I mean, sure. Is it noise? I mean, do you look at this? whole open data platform is just another uh, consortium, or you think it's got some legs? Um, you know, it's still new, right? So it's hard to, to, to talk to it. But um, 
I, you know, I think it's it's uh, people are going to kind of choose what they what they will. Um, there is uh, the the nice thing is, in, at least in the Hadoop space, right? There's I think there's more commonality than differences, right? And that's not always the case, in, as in some other you know open source uh, systems. Um, so that's helpful. Um, you know, whether you know how it shakes out, how it pans out, uh, I don't know. But um, you know, I think it's it's good for the users, right? Um, it's good to, to people to make noise about how they do things differently. Um, you know, how different it is, you know, it's probably for a lot of customers it isn't that different. But if you have particular use cases and other mm -hmm. things in different areas, uh, there's some value to that flexibility. What's the one thing you think people aren't talking about that should be talking about in the big data industry right now? The one thing that they aren't talking about, boy. What should be on the agenda that's not getting enough visibility in your mind? I mean, because everyone's always obviously the big data platform, yeah, open yeah. data platforms, obviously news, and there's some there's game and ship involved in that, but also it's a legit uh, move by yeah. You know, Pivotal, Hortonworks, IBM, among others. There's big right. players. It's CenturyLink, Verizon. Right, and right. Big players. It's yes. like, so that that's, that has to be talked about. And obviously, the position of Cloudera, Hortonworks, Mapbar, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. But what isn't being talked about? What is like? What should we be focusing on that yeah. maybe is being missed in the noise? Well, one of the things that uh, that I was uh, I thought I'd see more talk about. You know, people. You know, and, and maybe we'll see. I mean, the show's only being right, um, uh, and so maybe there'll be more of it. But I was surprised when you look at where the data growth is and where people are making some predictions on big data, you know, the Internet of Things is one that um, I would have thought more people would have been talking about, talking about how their platforms play into that. Um, you know, maybe people want to focus more on the infrastructure piece. But that, that creates a lot of questions around, you know, the deployment at the edges, you know, how people, uh, you know, work together in that area. There's commonality and standards that need work over there. So there's a lot of questions, and when you look at the amount of data being generated by machines versus other sources, uh, I would have expected to see you know more of that as a common theme, and maybe that will be. You know, we still got mm -hmm. a few days to it, but uh, that was one that uh, would be interesting to see a bit more teeth into. Yeah, I think uh, very good point, and I think that's really where we're going to see the next wave of innovation is going to come around, mm -hmm. building applications that tie in all that data coming off of machines, coming off of wearables, whatever whatever the case might be, all that data coming off physical objects, yeah. um, there's a huge opportunity there, and I think that's where you're going to see a lot of the a lot of the action, whether it's this week or not, I'm not sure, but uh, mm -hmm. I think going forward, that's where, where really the opportunity lies. Again, moving beyond the, okay, we can store and process this data, we can do some cost savings, but now let's talk about actually leveraging all this new data and ways to, to wait, ways to monetize it. Sure. So. So I got to ask you on predictions since we're here yeah. talking about predictions day one. Sure. What do you think is going to unfold in the event? I'll see Strata conference, Hadoop World, the big mashup mm -hmm. um, with O'Reilly Media. We're on there on the crowd chat there. Um, seems to be early, you know this hasn't really unfolded yet. Tomorrow is really the big day. Right. right. What do you think is going to happen? What's gonna, what's 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 going to be surprises? What's going to be happening? What's going to be obvious? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, it's uh, you know so you you see a lot of the pre-positioning right and vendors talking about what. I think the uh, interesting points are going to be when you see some of the you know Fortune 100 companies here talking about you know what they're doing, you know, what their future plans are, where they're investing. Um, I was surprised, uh, you know, we were setting up uh, our booth, uh, you know, today, and um, I look across and uh, you know there's Target there, and I was like, wow, that's um, that's kind of interesting, right? <laughs> I didn't expect that, right? So I'm very curious, you know, what they're there to talk about and what they're doing now. Maybe it's recruiting, maybe it's other purposes, but. Um, once you get the actual uh, users there, right, talking and mm -hmm. speaking and talking about the hiring needs that they have, um, then it gets out of all the, you know, the vendor, um, you know, uh, uh, Urinary Olympics, Dave Vellante calls it. So what's that? Dave Vellante calls it the Urinary Olympics. There we go, yes. So. You know, it's a classy really, way to put it. Yes, yeah. Yeah, but customers ultimately are trade show like. When you start to see customers showing up, it yeah. becomes kind of like a trade show, not just an industry conference. Exactly, and, and and seeing that, you know, just seeing them set up across from sales, like, yeah. wow, this could be interesting. Right, this could be a, a a new change, right, for this year versus yeah. in the past. Year. All right, Lawrence, so. we got to break it there. Thanks for coming. I really appreciate. It. Great to see you again. Congratulations on your success. Again, we're kicking off Big Data Week, Big Data SV in conjunction with Strata Conference and Hadoop World. This is the Cube. We'll be right back after the short break. Uh, this is the Cube. We'll be right back. <laughs>